Hello everyone, today we're going to go over our workshop on getting over procrastination. My name is Madison and I'm here with my coworker Lindsay and we're undergraduate educators at the Collaborative Learning Center and we're recording all these workshops so that you guys can work on your different um, academic success skills such as procrastination, time management, and things like that while we are um, learning online. So just as an outline of what we're going to go over today, we're going to go over what is procrastination with some examples, why do we procrastinate, how to determine self-efficacy, how to overcome procrastination, um, and the importance of prioritization with some time management reminders. So if you've watched some of our other workshops, some of these things may look similar to you, um, but it's always important to have repetition and to really cement these ideas in your head. Okay, so what is procrastination? Procrastination is not equivalent to laziness. It's an active process that involves choosing to do something else. Um, and it usually means that you're ignoring urgent or important tasks, and understanding what it is, is helpful to help overcome it. So I'm sure we can all think of some examples of procrastination, but just some that we have here are watching Netflix instead of finishing an assignment, taking frequent breaks to view social media instead of studying, putting off one subject by focusing on other subjects extensively, leaving something on a to-do list for a long time, focusing on low-priority tasks, and waiting to be in the right mood to work. So now that we're all um, learning our classes online, it is really easy to get into the habit of procrastinating using any of these. I know I personally have to really make sure that I'm split, just focusing on the ones that I like to do. Um, but we understand this is gonna be a big transition. So we're hoping that you can learn some tools in this workshop to help you fight this procrastination. So, Right now is when we usually do an activity in our in-person workshop, so what I'm going to ask you to just consider um, how significantly do you procrastinate? Do you know why you do it? And what tactics do you use to overcome procrastination? So go ahead and pause this video and just jot down um, a list on a scrap piece of paper or a sticky note. Um, how often do you procrastinate? Why do you think you do it? How do you usually get yourself back on track? Things like that. So go ahead and pause the video. Okay, so that you had some time to think about it on your, on your own, now we're going to go over some reasons why we procrastinate. So we procrastinate because we're driven by impulsivity, so something better comes up, or you want to check your phone, or you have a distraction at home, or something like that. Um, there may be a genetic component to it. Um, time management issues, this is a big one. If you don't think you have enough time to get it all off, because why waste your time if you're not going to be able to finish it? Um, not being connected to your future self, so not realizing that what you're doing now is going to impact who you are in a week. Um, and then we get to the day before the due date and you have to rush through it. And then it may be related to executive dysfunction. So this brings us back to Bandura's triadic reciprocal determinism, and this plays a role in determining self-efficacy. And it comes down to three factors, your behavioral factors, your personal factors, and your environmental factors. So your behavioral factors are things such as what have you done? What are your study habits? How, have you, how are you doing in your classes? What do you usually do to study through your test? Are you the kind of person that always checks their phone while they're studying? Um, and personal factors, or what can you do? So how much confidence do you have in yourself? Um, what have you done in the past? Um, and more of like intrinsic motivations. So are you motivated by the need to do well or the need to get a good grade or things like that? And then environmental factors, what do others do or believe you can do? Who are you studying with? Are they very focused studiers or do they distract you? Um, how is your study situation? Do you have a quiet place to study? Is your family always interrupting you? Does your family support you? Does your family believe that you can do this? Um, and so all of these things play a role in determining your self-efficacy. So again, another activity. So individually, think about personal behavior and behavioral and environmental factors that affect your academic self-efficacy. And consider what is something that motivates you and what is something that feeds your procrastination. So take a minute and pause the video and think about one thing that helps you to get over your procrastination and one thing that really helps you get back on track for your work. And what's one thing that always um, kind of derails your focus and makes you procrastinate and things like that. So go ahead and pause the video. So now that we talked a little bit about self-efficacy, this is the time in the workshop where we watch this video. It's a quick little three-minute video about overcoming procrastination. 
Um, it covers recognizing the procrastination, understanding why procrastination is happening, and then coming up with strategies. Um, so just take a minute and pause this Zoom and go over to YouTube so that you can watch the video really quick. And now we're going to talk about how to get motivated. Um, this is called a guide for defeating procrastination. It looks pretty overwhelming, but we'll break it up into chunks. And it basically goes over um, in the bottom left corner. Motivation equals expectancy times value divided by impulsiveness and delay. So we'll go over that um, on the next slide. So how to motivate. The Procrastin Equation um, accounts for every major scientific finding on procrastination and draws upon the best current theories of motivation. It looks like that equation there. Um, so expectancy refers to this perceived odds of getting a reward and whether we expect success or failure. Value refers to the pleasantness of doing a task and the size of its reward. Impulsiveness refers to the tendency to get distracted or lose focus on a task. And delay refers to the time between the present and the task's reward or completion. So, how to motivate? You want to increase um, both expectancy and value, and then you want to decrease impulsiveness and delay, because impulsiveness and delay are what allow people to procrastinate, um, because impulsiveness is, like Madison was saying, you want to go do a different task, you go watch Netflix, you go check your phone, things like that, and then delay would be you wait because you have more time, which means you're not going to study for an exam that you have next week starting now, you're going to study probably the night before, and that would be delaying something. Um, so you want to just increase expectancy and value, and we'll talk more about that on the next slide. So, um, increasing expectancy of success and certainty of being rewarded. So in these little yellow squares, um, all of these things are ways to increase expectancy. So go ahead and identify which ones will work for you. Um, you can pause the video, read them all over, um, but they're basically just different ways to focus on that. And then the little sub branches offer um, more in-depth ideas. But the largest ideas um, are actions required, recognize success, get inspired, plan for the worst, hope for the best, accept your procrastination, that's a big one, um, contrast, and then check your mindset. And then to increase value and pleasantness of doing a task, um, the largest ones here are find passion, um, mix bitter and sweet, add accountability, use productive procrastination, keep your brain healthy, create a reward, get some energy, create competition, find flow, and find meaning. All these things are super important because they can add value to what you're doing and basically force you to like get in touch with your future self and focus on like why is this task important to be completed now? Why is it better to do it now rather than doing it in two days when it's not due until three days later? Things like that. And then the next one is decrease impulsiveness by limiting distractions. Um, so here it would be set a goal. Um, something we'll talk about later is soft deadlines, which are super important. Um, run a dash, eliminate temptation, make failure painful, eliminate distractions, create routines and habits, use goal reminders, stop suppressing thoughts, make progress visual, and use negative pairing. All of these things can help reduce impulsiveness that will lead you away from your goals and away from those things that you don't actually want to do. Um, like studying, even though it's super important. Um, but it's super important to decrease impulsiveness, especially during the time of online classes, because it is so much easier now when you're just um, off, like not in a classroom setting, to like disengage with your Zoom lecture or things like that. So now that we talked about how to get motivated, um, we're going to talk about coming up with strategies that will help you motivate. So the first one is create new habits. Creating new habit, habits can be hard. Um, it takes long periods of time to create new habits. So starting in the middle of the semester isn't a bad thing. It just means that you can start now and hopefully you'll adopt those in the next few weeks. Um, and then to create the new habits, you can use incentives. A lot of times people will think, oh, I can't watch this Netflix show that I want to watch until I've studied for this long, or I can't go on any social media until I've completed this assignment. It just depends on which incentives will help you um, to motivate yourself to want to um, avoid procrastination. And then the next thing would be to take breaks using the Pomodoro method. So the Pomodoro method is essentially like 
it's kind of like basically a framework for how you should be studying. It has to do with like the quantity of time that you study. So the Pomodoro method suggests that you study in intervals of 25 minutes studying and then five minute breaks afterwards. And then it recommends after the fourth time of studying for 25 minutes, you take a longer break, like a 15 minute break. Um, if you can't study for two hours, that's completely okay. Um, not everyone can study for two hours. It's hard to focus for that long. Um, so the main point of it is just that 25 minute chunk of time and then the five minute break afterwards. And the five minute break is where you will answer a text or go get a snack or like go get some water and things like that. Um, so that's really important that the 25 minutes, you're not doing that because those small distractions of like answering a text every few minutes can add up to a lot of time in the end and can contribute to procrastination and not getting tasks done that you need to get done. Um, and the next thing would be tackle difficult tasks first. Um, a lot of times people will avoid the most difficult tasks and think, oh, I'm getting things done, I'm doing smaller tasks, I'm doing all of these little things. Um, but that will have to do with what we talk about later with um, um, prioritization. And it also has to do with the video that you watched earlier because um, avoiding difficult tasks is a form of procrastination. Even though you think you're getting things done, it is procrastination because you're not doing the things that you actually need to do first. Um, and then the last part would be utilize soft deadlines, as I mentioned earlier. So soft deadlines are essentially like you give yourself a smaller deadline than the one and like a more pressing deadline than the one that your professor gave to you. So say it's a Monday and you have an essay due Friday. You'll give yourself a deadline to complete the first half of the essay by Wednesday, and then you'll complete the second half by Thursday, and you'll complete editing by 3 p.m. on Friday, and then that gives you like a good buffer of time to actually like do some more editing on your essay, rather than just focusing on the hard deadline that the professor gave to you. Um, and then the next thing would be getting rid of distractions. Um, this one's just a very general one. It's always a good idea. Put your phone somewhere else, put it on silent, all of those things. Close your room door so that you're not distracted by like your family or your friends or your roommates, um, all of that good stuff. And then tell someone else about your goals. This can be really helpful because it can keep you on track. If you tell a family member and they keep pestering you about it, you'll be more inclined to do it. Or if you tell your roommate, they can talk to you about it. And then you can like go over things that you're thinking. Or if you tell a classmate, you can work with them on things that you're thinking about um, for like your project or your essay or your exam, things like that. And then thinking about the bigger picture, a lot of times people don't think about in the long run how what they're doing now will be important for their future self. Um, so just connecting with your future self in that way can be a big motivator um, because it can basically show you like, this is important and this is why I should do it rather than my professor told me that I need to write this essay or like complete this exam. Um, and then prioritize, which we'll talk about coming up. Okay, so this is the prioritization matrix video. It explains basically this matrix that we're about to go through and fill out. Um, so just take time, pause the video and go watch the video on YouTube. Um, it's a pretty short video as well. I think it's like three minutes or maybe four minutes. Um, yeah, so just take the time now to pause the video and go watch this. Okay, so now that we've watched the video and introduced ourselves to the prioritization matrix, we're going to try to fill one out. Um, so the first thing would, um, that we would have you do is make a to-do list for next week. Um, write down all of the things that you can think of that are important to you. It can be solely academic, personal, um, personal and academic anything that you want, um, this is for you. So it could be completely personal if you want. If you're like, I have to do my laundry, I have to clean my room, I have to water my plants, you can write those things down. Or if you have to study, or you have to complete an assignment, or you have to turn in like a grading sheet, all of those things you can put on there. Um, try to only have 15 to 20 things total on your list. Um, if you have anything more than that, it becomes kind of overwhelming. Um, to be truthful and then that can help demotivate you. So try not to have more than 20 things on there. And then the last point is, if you have 15 to 20 things to do this weekend, make a weekend to-do list. So it doesn't have to be for like an entire week. It could be over the course of like two days, three days. Um, yeah, just take some time, pause the video and write out your to-do list.
So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to organize this list into the provided prioritization matrix. Um, so during the workshop, we pass out matrices to everyone. And there would be one online for you to use. But if you don't want to print that out or you can't print that out, you can always make your own. So it kind of looks like the graphic on the right. So the top would be do now, which is um, high importance and high urgency. And then the other side would be do next, which is urgency, low, importance, high. And then there's do last, which is importance, low, urgency, high. And then do never, which isn't actually never. It just means do it when you're not procrastinating anything and you have a lot of time. Um, so urgency, low, importance, low. Um, so that can help get you on track. Um, so then put all of your goals into this little matrix of how you um, rate the tasks that you need to do. And putting something in like the four box versus the one box doesn't mean that it's like something you'll never complete or something that you need to avoid doing. It just means that like the things in the one box should be the things that you're focusing on. And those are the important tasks that I was talking about, the difficult tasks that you should do first. Um, yeah, and then it'll help you make a plan to accomplish your goals, and then be realistic and don't overextend yourself. Um, so now is a good time to pause the video and try to fill out your matrices. Okay, um, and then we also now have some time management reminders. Um, keep a to-do list and prioritize items on it. So, related to the um, prioritization matrix, this is super important because not writing things down, a lot of times people will be like, oh, I keep everything that I have to do in my head. And while that can be super awesome to like have a memory like that, it becomes unrealistic if you have like multiple tasks to do. And then changing your environment can also throw it off. So it's super important, especially with online classes, to keep a to-do list and prioritize the items on it. And then schedule and plan split up tasks. So Relating to the Pomodoro method, try to study in like intervals that you know you can handle and try to accomplish tasks in intervals that you know you can handle and then schedule and plan when you're going to do things. So I always recommend pulling out a planner and writing like I will study this class today. I will do this assignment today and all of those good things because if you don't write it down, it's easier to forget things like that. And it's also easier to look at your calendar and think, oh, I don't have anything to do today. I can watch Netflix for a long amount of time rather than doing this assignment that I completely forgot I had to do. And the next thing would be tackle hardest tasks at times where you are most focused. Um, so relating to what we previously mentioned about do difficult tasks first, it's also important to remember when are you most focused and how will you be most productive on those tasks. So if you're most focused in like the early morning, then do those tasks first. If you're most focused at like 3 p.m., do the tasks at 3 p.m. Um, that one had just has to do with like knowing yourself and knowing what you can do. And then set time bound goals back to the Pomodoro method again. Um, this can just help you um, with basically giving yourself extra time in case you need it because most of the time you will need extra time. And that's okay. It's normal to like be like, oh, I set aside this amount of time to study for this exam and then realize that, oh, I actually need more time. It's better to realize that you need um, that you have more time and you can give it to yourself rather than realizing you need more time but you don't have that time. And that is why procrastinating is not helpful because if you're cramming and things like that, that's when you realize, oh, I actually needed like a lot more time to study for this exam, but I don't have it because the exam's in two hours and I didn't start studying until like last night. Things like that. And then use task and time management apps such as Forest, etc. Um, so there are a million bazillion apps out there. There's even screen time on iPhones now where it will block you out of apps. So if you're someone that uses your phone for procrastination, which is super common, um, try to get apps like Forest so it can like keep you on track. Um, this app just basically like it, if you, so it, the way it works is when you lock your phone, um, you can set it up that it'll like plant a tree for like the amount of time that you lock your phone. So if you unlock your phone, you don't get to plant the tree. Um, so just like small things like that, depending on whatever works for you. 